Hello everyone, I'm Me Phone 4 and I'm Son of Beast and this is NBA 2K23 on 2K Sports. Hello everyone, Son of Beast here and uh, we hope to say that the 2022 is officially finished. Right now it's finally 2023. Happy New Year everyone. And as we are ready to start things up here for the next game, this is Game 5 of NBA 2K23. The next matchup we have is Orlando Magic facing against OKC Funders. As for the players of itself, may have a tough matchup in between by the hand of those two. As we have some gutter players, and not just enough to go right from the head to head in between the starts of the overall ratings. But it might be tough though to find out how well they could do. Here are the courtesy of the lineups as they start with the Magic. Jalen Suggs, Frank Swagner, Fialo Bancharo, Boyle of Boyle, and Wendell Carter Jr. There might be tough ones in between, but it may not be enough to go for it. And on the other side we have is Shelly the Gorgeous Alexander, Josh Giddy, Lujan Stewart, Jalen Williams, and Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Let's go down to Paycom Center to start the presentation. It's all yours, guys. 2K Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the NBA. Hello everyone, me phone here, along with my sideline of paintbrush. This is NBA 2K Sports. As of right now, this coverage is being the matchup of the Funders as they take on against the Magic. I have also David Aldridge on the sidelines. Thanks, Kevin. Franz Wagner was in the Rookie of the Year consideration last year for the Magic. He said there are a lot of reasons for fans to be excited for the future. We've got a lot of young talent, but my job is to be in the now and try to win games. What's helped me so far is focusing on each day at a time. Kevin, back to you. There we go. It's just a good thing to go for. Thank you so much, David. This one's going to be a special night here. As Magic and the Funders have a lot of nothing but the tougher teams that are played here before. Funders already won against the Atlanta Hawks and Magic have brought a win against the Houston Rockets. The head coach right now is Jamal Mosley. This is his second season with the Orlando Magic since last season with the first. I know about that. Mosley is definitely one of the greatest part of a, uh, coaches that had played. After Clipper was not able to uh, be the head coach there, he wants to make a little secret out of it if he wants to make some changes out there. So we are not really sure how this all happened. We'll have to find out if there's anything else here. Here are the starting lineups here. This group all fueled up and ready to go. Smuts is covered up by Gordix Alexander. Ball is closing up here. Now it's Banchero on the other hand, and Carter Jr. And across from here is another one that gets things up here is Wagner. Wagner's really well to play this game. He knows himself that he could definitely try to take him all what he got. But sometimes, however, it looks like it does turn out. It has an amazing thing to go with the number group at the lineup that they are looking for. Wagner, we'll see how well he has played to get over. Three-pointers off the mark. Boyle, what a blocking run off, and he took it away. That's a great defense here for Boyle, showing up what his moves can be. Smokes with the ball. He moves over to Wagner. Wagner with the layup. That's good. That's the first bucket drive for Wagner, and he's got two points. Look at that drive. Nice layup and a good finger roll. That turned out to be like he had practiced his performance roll. What a start. And that was your mobile one drive for the Magic. Here's Robinson Earl. He dishes off to give Gorgeous Alexander. Moves in the front. Run the baseline is good. And Gorgeous Alexander gets his second bucket. 
for me, between the last season and two seasons ago, he was able to try to make his focus on his move. But somehow, however, it will be a tough one to deny his story to give him a well worthy length credit. Carter Jr. making a two point bucket score. And it is already a new year, turning out to be just amazing. I hope you enjoyed tasting the holiday season here of last year to this year. And this one is going to be a new year to get this thing to start. As we may have new changes in between the players, but we'll never know if there's any change up. Great drive by Dwarf. That's a first bucket score. OKC funders are still an even score. Smugs with the run. He dish off to Banchero. He looks it back over to Smug. Suggs over to Boyle. Boyle with a corner layup. It's taken out by Carter Jr. Carter Jr. with the first rebound. Bashes off to Carter Jr. Six on the shot clock. Smugs open look. Rebound again. Carter Jr. up. Count the bucket and one. That's another bucket. Josh Giddy with the first personal. And now we have first team foul on OKC. You saw that one here because of a rebound was putting up a well-performed run on Carter Jr. He waits up, he slides back, and then he made that layup. That's going to be a count bucket and drive. What a shot, and that will be his first one to save the day. Orlando shooting their free throws here for the first time here in the first quarter. Stop the clock at 319 left to go. Carter Jr. hits the free throw. Carter Jr.'s got seven points in this game. Here's Shea. Gilkorjic's Alexander lost the ball, turns over to Suggs. Here's a fast break. Look at that drive. That's Banchero with the finish, and Suggs with the assist. That's a great easy look. How can you know that Banchero was able to make up a great easy scoring? He really has one, because Shea has lost the ball. He forgot to bring it back, but he was a little loose on his hand. Maybe he had a lot of difficulty to make the problem come up. And might need to try that one again. Thunders trail by three. Slugs leaves over to Benchero. Make new changes. Finds Carter Jr. Jr. up with the roll. Picks it up with a fingertip, and a Carter Jr. gets nine in a bucket score. He's well performed here on his part of the season, playing with a different team that had already played here before last season. That's with the Rockets. Yeah, of course you know that Carter Jr. definitely can do this one more and more. Problem is, he might need to show up if he can just try to work his run. Timeout call by Funders. They decided to talk it over and refuel with the hydrated Gatorade. They're just going to need to make new, new moves out there on offense and try to scoop it up here on defense. There's one way. They really got to get over this one here. And at that time, they really got to do it the right way. Might need to fix something up here if they wanted to go for another look. New substitution change here for the Magic and the Thunders. A couple players are checked out. A couple players are checked in. Five players already checking out. Okiki, Bamba, Ross, and Anthony are checked in. As Wagner moves over to the point four. Also another five here as Mann, Wiggins, Williams, Badsley, and Kowalski are also checked in. Here's Okiki. He finds Wagner. We're under two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Anthony with a shot. He can't get that one here as Kovitsky gets his first rebound. Williams finds over to Mann. Moves over to Wiggins. Swings back to Williams. Ball's tip. Taken away by Okiki. And Cole Anthony on a fast break. Looking for Bamba. Bamba shot. Good. That's Cole Anthony with the assist. Bamba's got his first bucket. You know that one? Mo Bamba. He is very the toughest man here in the secondary lineup. 
I'm pretty sure he's very a good guy. He never wants to be leaving off with the magic. I think a secondary lineup could definitely work for him. He's already on to his first of his appearance run. Nice D by Wagner. He is making another changeup and has his first rebound up a board. We're under 60 seconds to play in the first period. Wagner ticked away by Pasley. That's a first turnover, Orlando. Here's man up and over and can't make that two-pointer to go in. There's a lot of great uh, choices. They were always wanting to pick it up. They got to find another way to try to stop him. Here's Wagner. Slings back to Okiki. 30 seconds to play, six to shoot. Rocks with two. Off target here as Bamba, Bamba with the rebound. Anthony resets his lineup. Bamba lost the ball. Pomielski with the second steal. Here's the fast break for Man. Nice D by Bamba. Almost tipped up a foul. Really close call. Another tip. Baisley, Wiggins, looking for a chance to beat the buzz beater. And the drive is good. That's a great feed here for Baisley. And he's got his first bucket. Ball goes out, and that ends the first quarter. Orlando lead by three. They're looking for a tough score to get the run right in line. We're sure enough to be lucky here. We'll see how well they do. We'll come back after this break. Second period about to start, as the quarter has already been phased up here with a close call by Orlando and OKC. Orlando lead by three. OKC funders have already won a couple of one games here and beat against the Atlanta Hawks last season. But this time, as you know, that the Magic have already put up a win against the Detroit and also Houston Rockets, which was also last season as well. I see that one because the most of the time players are really well being. They really off to a great start. I mean, to talk about that one, there is a lot of good things about the team that they're already beating the Houston team. I mean, they're very, like, very well at that point and proving to be hard on the tip. What a drive by Jalen Williams. That will be a mobile one drive for Funders. Here's Fultz. Looks his over to Carter Jr. Wagner right back to Fultz. New changes being released. Carter Jr. for three. Tipped it open range and Swish has gone down. Carter Jr. got a great three pointers in the game. Talk about this one here. Good open look, great screen call. What a pass tip. Kokosevsky on Carter Jr. This is over to Piche. Gilgordis Alexander. Oh, lost the ball. Tipped it out, but it was too late. He really had a lot of problem out there. Jai couldn't find a man open, so he had to put it back on the court and couldn't keep it out of bounds here before it was turned over. Finds Carter Jr. Step up on a number two. And he ran around the rim and missed again. Gilgordix Alexander going to try it again. Williams for three. Three-pointer no good here for OKC. Carter Jr. has his fourth rebound of the game. Now he swings to Fultz. Leads is over to Banchero. Banchero up with the ball. No good target out either. Pokosevsky, another rebound. Now going over to Williams. Great shot, Ermey, and it's another assist here. As it turned out to be Josh Giddy. Josh Giddy it was. Sucks over to Fultz. Fultz haven't scored anything yet, but try to look for an open look. Great shot made by Fultz. He makes his first bucket contact, and they're up ahead by four. Gorgix Alexander finds Giddy. Now it swings to Klokowski. Layup went low, tumbling late, but it was picked off too soon. That really has to understand it because the layup drive needs to be on a clean shape. You can't get the layup drive if you have it with one hand, but you got to look for an open man to make the shot. That really is going to stand out what they've got. Carter Jr. 
driving in. Another layup score for Carter Jr. Really well played out there. As it turned out to be a toughest lead. Now the timeout has been called by Shea for OKC Funders. Just 3.04 left to play in the first half. That's a tough, tremendous score that they played. Really has to turn things off that they really wanted to get things over with. Now if they need some a little help out there, they need more to get back into the game. Now I'm really sure about this one here. As you talk about Shea Gilgorgic's Alexander, he is also known by his initial. They only calls him SGA and is a Canadian professional basketball player. He really also played here for one of the years in college with the University of Kentucky and he played for the Wildcats at that point. He really has shown his great performance of his skill, a terrific moment, and he really also has to tell that position always gives him a good look in between. And I know that Kentucky was definitely the only play in this game for his since the all-freshman team here since 2018. And he was in his set in this part of the set tournament here of the MVP that also earned him also in 2018. He definitely was the best, but first he was definitely selected by the Charlotte Hornets with this 11th overall pick. And then it was traded off to Los Angeles Clippers. Well, definitely the second team that they lost called him. They are really going to get things all that they have. New changes are coming in as three players are checked out. New changes. Harris Manchero moves over to small forward and Boyle is checked back in. And he's fouled. That's all Carter Jr. DA Robinson Earl checked in. That's a set first team foul for Orlando. Robinson Earl will be heading to the free throw line to shoot two. And that's what you don't want to do because if you're in the man behind him, you cannot try to like take him over down and try to whip it out of the way. You don't want that one because that will lead to a foul on your team. Robertson Earl hits the first free throw. And you know that one here, Payne Brush, because Robertson Earl was definitely one of the greater players here that was definitely played here so far and long. How does it really take you to become that Robinson Earl was a great player. Well, I gotta say that this was definitely my only part of a team that I'd never heard of him before. Maybe the moment of him was turning to be a one lucky credit for him. And for this guy, however, he could definitely try to take over from, from Noel. He may have a lot of things to try to take it out of here and then try to move it over again. Maybe that might be a rare technique to get over with the other player. Here's the gorgeous Alexander after the drive-in by Harris. Dort on Mancho. Looking over. Try to reach around him. Excellent deed on Banchero. That's number one for his force rebound. Banchero swings the ball. Well, back up with the Banchero. He moves over to Harris. Harris swings back to Banchero. Six to shoot. Looks for Carter Jr. for two. That misses off target. Jordan with the rebound. We're coming down to two minutes to play in the first half of the game. Two minutes number two. A no good open shot. He lost the target and couldn't try to save it back. Really has to try to keep an open focus if he wants to get in there. Bolts back to Banchero. Swings it over. Magic are definitely pulling up an open look here with the pass, and they definitely did make some new changeup. Drive makes that one a good look. Harris receiving another two point bucket score. And the Orlando for this season has turned out to be wild and crazy up on the look angle. Might be looking for another two point score. I'm pretty sure that Magic might be stepping into playoffs, but it might be too hard though if they're looking for a franchise player. It might not be enough to go up over it. Carter Jr. to Banchero. Banchero back to Harris. Five to shoot. Looking back over to Fultz. With the shot, and he's fouled by Robinson Earl. That's his first personal and another team foul on OKC. Look, watch what he does. He was going to make a step, 
But watch what his hand does. He went right from his elbow and made it slung down right from the arm. He knew that, and he was like all chopped up again. That's what the defenders do. They can't let the players try to make him slap and make the early contact here on a foul. Because that will give the players a free throw chance. Bolts at the free throw line as they're getting another free throw attempt here for Orlando for the second time. First free throw for Fultz has checked in. Make that bucket cap and with the run. Here are new changes here as four players are checked out. Four players are checked in. Anthony Ross Carter Jr. moves over to point forward and Bamba in the center. Five players comes off the court. Mann, Wiggins, Dieng, Williams, and Basley are checked in. Second free throw for Fultz is good. That's two bucket scores for a two-pointer and two point on the free throw line. And that counts it as four. Wiggins back to Mann. Mann over to Dieng. Looks over to Wiggins. Back to Williams. And offensive foul calls on Wiggins. That will be a first personal on number team foul. Check out that block from Van Chero. He denied at that point. Really was never going to like try to take it off that point. He really has shown things all that Van Chero was a bigger man. Bang, bang. That ball goes tipped down. Fultz now swings to Carter Jr. Rolls it back over to Ross. Ross hasn't scored anything yet, but wants to make a difference. Looks for Ross. What a pass here by Anthony. And bucket score for Ross. 15 out of 4 1 in the last 448 per minutes. When we're under 30 seconds to play in the first half. Now he's over the end. Williams on Carter Jr. Rolls back to Mann. Seven to shoot. They need to get a bucket score. They can't hit the target. Bamba has received his third rebound. And that will close the first half of this game. Fultz going for deep. But it won't be enough to get there. That is the end of the first half. Stay tuned as we've got the halftime show coming up. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after this. Tough comeback runs here in between by the two of the Eastern Conference team and the Western Conference team. Let's have a look at the first half. With the start off in between, what a great scoring bucket drives for Shea and also Robinson Earl. But other players like Wagner and Carter Jr. have definitely making some good contact shots. Now for this one was really tough. Not sure about what will happen to the OKC Thunders, but they really need to step things up a bit more to get started here for the second half. It may be possible enough to try to hit the deck. As for the uh, Magic itself, they're really picking up two pointers here. Looking for a chance to get two wins in the consecutive seasons, and there might be another one to get it back on the line. Great steals here for the Thunders, and two blocks for Magic. And that's going to do it here. Now we send you back over to Meatbone and Paintbrush at Paycom Center. See you guys later for the post-game show. Welcome back to Paycom Center. They're the team that the score has bring up a Thunder in Oklahoma City. OKC Funders and Orlando Magic. Then we talk about Wendell Carter Jr. He is definitely making a great contact scores. A great terrific rebound and an assist. 14, 6, and 1. How does it really feel that that Wendell is doing his excellent performance there, Paintbrush. I gotta say that he's really well into this one. I think that most of the players are really turning out. He did have his own patient. And I am betting that he is very excellent on his playing skills on this team. He really would like to play here with the Magic. But that's all he had, would have made a decision here. I got a lot of tough things to tell him. And he's definitely the best. Robinson Earl with the rebound. Boyle brings it back. That's a tough one on the defense. You can't mess that up. Puts it back. And Giddy picking up a drive. A really back rebound. Now, here's Fultz. Fultz leaves it over to Carter Jr. Swings back over to Wagner. Leads over to Fultz. Step back again. 
He can't hit that target here as he makes another missed contact. Another one making misses. Good try, folks, but he might need to get over. Wagner with the block. Wagner is pretty sure coming back in here. I gotta believe this guy. He's well performed. Wagner misses. Socks outside in the corner. Wagner with the ball. Six to shoot. Suggs over around Earl and making a good drive out of contact shot. Another basket here for Suggs and a great driving through by Mobile One. That's what you know that most players can't handle with the drives. They've really got to step it up. And now I know that Suggs, he just finally has his bucket score. Waited patiently on first half and now he's all in alone. Jordan, nobody around him, and he made a great drive in the paint. Timeout by Orlando. That'll be their first timeout here to stop the clock at 4.14. Very well to see how this turned out. And I'm pretty sure that this is definitely one of the toughest teams that no one has ever faced. But I think there might be franchise players that we can definitely find another one to help him out with this team by Shea Gilford to Alexander if they're looking for other players to get back into. Because they have a lot of things in training, they have to find another way to get another training rig guide to get over by the site. How does it really feel how the funders need? They need that. They always need that one here. They really gotta step it up more. And because all the players here from the Jazz, they always missed out with the players like Rudy Gobert, Royce O'Neal, Joe Ingalls, every other players, Robo McDonovich and Donovan Mitchell. They are already been missing out here for the games, and they are always making their move to try to go with a different team to help them out get through it. And with the next game that will be coming up here, speaking of that one, we have the Sixers and the Cavaliers coming up here for the next couple weeks of the game. So keep tuning in to Seven Beasts on this channel, and make sure to subscribe. If you don't, somebody will. Here are the new changeups here as it will be another look out on the opposite side. Banchero comes in for Fultz and another hand as, as Wagner moves over. Also new changes here as Robinson Earls checked out. And backing in is Pokovsevsky. Sucks. Moves around and go Gorgix Alexander. And gets a rebound by Pokovsevsky. He's got his second rebound of the game. And he's fouled, Dort, but going to the free throw line, shooting two. Banchero's fouled. Their first team foul has been picked up here for Orlando. He's really well on that one. Take the tape scoring with the pass. It looks like Dort was going to try to deliver it. But it did turn out that Banchero really knocked him out of here. He might have to, like, try to pick it up again. Another free throw attempt's coming up here for the OKC Funders as there is under four minutes left to play. First bucket went in. And to tell you about Dort, he's really well into his most of his time ability, but he really has gotten things a bit scoring on his draft. How does it really turn out that, it, that most players have a lot of it in common to get right into it? They really have a lot of things. I, I gotta tell that most players really would like to see how they would like to change things up. It looks like the Lugens Dort really might show something else if he really wants to like try to keep it over and try to find another way to get around it. I'm hoping that Dort might be able to keep the pressure alive if he wants to do it again. Suggs right over to Wagner. Bounce past the ball. Two men on him and back to Wagner going for three and then missed off target as Williams takes it over. Never missed the three-pointer of the bucket score here for the OKC Funders, looking for another three-pointer, and they have to get it in there. Here's Wagner. Has scored already with just only four points. Banchero tips off to Wagner. Bounce pass to Wagner. Around the man, and count the bucket and wide. Wagner receives his six points. And Posevsky with the foul. Oh man, how could Wagner do that? 
They really want to get around it. I can't believe that Wagner was definitely delivering. Let's go. That's what his shot raising to this one turned out. Now the one free throw line attempt ability will be Wagner as he already has scored six points in this game. Looking for an extra point to go for seven. Throw good for Wagner. Funders trail by 13. Poltevsky well faced out, but it's Boyle with the rebound. Boyle has received his first rebound automatically. 18 rebounds for Orlando and only 12 for OKC. They really have some a lot of high musicians in between. They need to find another way to get over. As of right now, David Aldridge has already been talked to with, this, with the head coach here from the Orlando Magic and the OKC Funders. They've got a lot of tough players that they are going to try to make it through. They really want to step things up a bit and want to get right back into this game. We're hoping now that there might be another player that can get back right to this game and step it all up. Here's Sutz. Covering up here by Shai. Finds Boyle. Moves it over now to Banchero. Banchero up to Wagner. Looking at another hand. Boyle! Oh yeah! You count that, baby! That's a two-point lead. And going for another crazy scoring inside drives. That's for Wagner. He is delivering a crush out. Time out call by OKC Funders. We got a lot of stockability and they are going to try to keep it up focused. One place, they have lots of stuff. Rumble the bowl of this is in the house, man. I've always seen you look for it. New changeups here for the OKC Funders and for the Orlando Magic. As right now, four players checked out for the Magic. Four players checked in as Okiki, Bamba, Ross, and Anthony are checked in. The Funders are also making new changes as four players are checked out. Massey, Williams, Wiggins, and Mann are checked in. Man, looking for a look. Almost slipped away, but Bazzi recovers. That's almost going to be a helpful that they really need to get that back. Because if they don't have the ball right in his hand, that could be a loose one, and that will turn things over the other way. Ross over to Anthony. Anthony back to Ross. Shoots over Wiggins. That's no good here from the two-point range. Ross making a little mistake out there, but need to find something else to try to keep it up. What a jam out by, I don't know who that was. That was turning out to be a, a winnable by Banchero. I really got to say that this was a tough call. I thought it was Bama or it was Ross. But even I don't have any questions to say about it, but it may be too hard to go over. The second foul goes on from the left speed. Their second team foul on OKC. Bama able to go to the free throw line to shoot two. He went right around it. He didn't really want to get right back into it. And he really needs to get right into the in the board zone. Because what happens though, the man was on close. He was able to try to take him down. But he did not have the right timing to do this. Therefore, Bamba is taking his way to move it around the back. They've really got to fight their way back in there for the OKC Funders to step it up again. Energize it, bring to elevate. Bamba with the first free throw makes it in. Now a new player checks in as Dian checks in for Pavlevsky. We talked about Bamba here as, as it really turns out to be just like he does here for each game. They also call it Bamba. Bamba was really like a, a famous player. I have never always seen him before. It just really has to happen more, more than quite often. And he definitely has done. He actually played in college in Texas with the Longhorns here with the team. He really does know that he got a great hand on it and did turn out that he was right on the money line. And I have to say about him, his spark was just attending at the Cardigan Mountain School, and then it was in Canaan, New Hampshire, and then Westtown School, that was in Westchester, Philadelphia. Oh, I mean, Pennsylvania, if I have to call for that. 
There are two Westchesters in there, but it has to be like Pennsylvania for himself. I'll call it Penn for sure. Well, my choice is obvious. It may be tough. Diang at the free throw line, shooting two, able to make the first free throw. After the foul was being picked up on Banchero. He didn't know if he was going to take his time, but he was lifted out too soon. His time was definitely not enough to get right into his professional to make it a tenfold. Second free throw was missed off short. Only one out of two free throws was bringed up for the player of himself, the DA. Anthony lifts over to Banchero. Up and overhead by Bam Bamba. Great move by Bamba. An assist by Banchero. He's lifting up his new momentum out there as Bamba has six. Well, I say that Bamba was like a definite impetus of speed and his ability really has tamed things off. Now, here's Wiggins. Trying to go for three. Once again, no free marks has made for the OKC Funders. They're missing out too soon. Yeah, I know, because what happens though, there are too many players that are making open shots this time, and they have nowhere to go. They left it out too soon. Anthony firing a three. That gets him off target. Williams over to Wiggins. Wiggins for three. And no good on the three-point shot. That ends the third quarter. Orlando starting to get smoking out there, looking for a way to win the game just two consecutive seasons. When we come back, fourth quarter is on, and we'll see which player has the best. We'll stick you around once we get them back. Thank you all the players. They really love it. It's time now to present your State Farm Assist of the Game. One player has to call that one here, just a change up in his, underneath the position. Watch what he does. He does have it for Wagner. And therefore, he had a drive, went on around the Pulisivski. He really got a great contact look and made a basket, had hit the backboard, and he really liked to tip it in. It's a great play to keep your eyes open on, to find an open look angle and try to get your bucket in. Three quarters have finished. Now we're down to the final quarter. And this time, as we have a bunch of players scoring big here, Wendell Carter Jr. and it's Wagner, Mo Bamba, Banchero making six assists in a row. Well played out to beat over the Thunders. Boyle misses again. Carter Jr. takes it back and lays it up again. Carter Jr., 16 points in the bucket score. He's lifting new heights. The limit is no temptation. He really uh, likes it to take it away from his ability and try to pressure it on. The gorgeous back to Giddy, going for three. Still no three pointers to make that one. They are missing too much. Now here's Harris, who perched down to just a minute to play here on the quarter. Now just five minutes. Wagner back to Sutz. Lifting around an overhang. And Carter gets it back. Putting around on Suggs to do it again. Harris. Over Giddy. No good shot. Giddy receiving another bucket of this big rebound. Needs to look for him carefully. Jay going for three. Got it! He finally had that one. But just a two-point bucket score. He was over the line. They're not going to count the three-pointers. He was way over the mark. Harris with three. Count the bucket and cash money flows in. Harris receiving a first three-pointer, extending the lead 50 to 29. Now that's a tough one that they want to get. Giddy tries again. And still no temptation to make the three-pointer. Boyle back over to Suggs. He lifts over to Carter Jr. Swings over to Harris. Carter back over to Suggs. Need new changes for the OKC funders on defense and the Magic on offense. Looks open to Harris. Wow! What a drive move. And Harris had a bucket in. Just nine points and excellent feed off from Suggs. He is delivering his patience that he did. That was your mobile one drive in the game for Magic. No free pointers tempted for Dorf. 
and Wagner brings it back over again. Flips over to Carter Jr. Jr. back over to Suggs. Lifts over to Carter Jr. Lifts over to Boyle. Up over Dort. Nice defense. That's another great opportunity range to hit the deck. Giddy an overlook. And no good on the three-point line over there on the other hand. That was too hard for him. He wasn't even ready to try to take his own time. He was not able to pick up the pressure. Wagner around Dort. Wow, what a stop here for Wagner and made that one a tough drive. Wagner's pretty strong. He may have just gotten a lot of hesitation to try to avoid the players. Getting left behind, no adoption. Robinson Earl with a layup drive. They're going back to back insane run. We're under two to, I mean, we're under three minutes, I should say. This one should be another one that they're going for. Boyle on Bolotevsky, over to Suggs. Harris back into the wing. Cross. Suggs up. Shooting around and it went in and out. Tough shots here are turning out to be a little too off the hook. But they might need another look to get back in it. Robinson Earl can't fire to three. Three pointers are impossible. They're really not going to get that one done if they don't know how to get this one correct. Time is winding down. Only two minutes to play in the fourth quarter. Harris with the ball. Swings off to Wagner. Six to shoot. Over around Giddy and make that count. Fire the bucket range and he has eight. Wagner's really well at this point. He went around it. Try to fade off the shot. I mean, you can count that one. Dort going for three. Rebounded back. Fastly able to make that two-pointer. After a rebound, three-pointer went short. They're still trailing as they're going to try to figure it out the other way. Carter Jr. helps out with the screen. Looking for a man opener. Finding Boyle up around him and cut back in with the drive. Boyle making a good get basket moves. He's got six in his game. The gorgeous Alexander Dort right to Robinson Earl. And Earl takes it in. Now the new setup of this changeup is coming into comparison by Carter Jr. and Robinson Earl. Just a higher point skill average that picks him up. He's really on the task. Really well how he does. He plays like that he never did. Sugs up. It's off target here as Dort takes it away. Basley. Wow! Slam that in there! What a play! And looks like the crowd really wants that. Dunks need it! Timeout called by Orlando with just under a minute. With just 44.6 seconds. They're really going to need to talk this over for one last changeup. And the changeup here too on the other hand for Funders, they're really going to like try to step it up more. And with the next commentary, we will have another one as we will keep your eyes tuned here for Son of Beast. Then we'll be test two. It's just another one to keep your eyes worthy credit on the run if you'd like to go check out the previous games of Cavs and Hornets. That'll be the next one to keep your eyes tuned on for the next game in the New Year's spot. There's just going to be a lot of ton games that they're going to try to like keep the range up and the momentum. This thing, of course, really keeps it on going. I always know that. Looks like Cavs may need to have another win if they want to bring it back. And now it's time to present your New Balance Player of the Game. And the player of this game goes to Jalen Suggs. Suggs really has gotten some great shooting technique of a score, only two. But last season was 11.6 in the game. They really had no options to make that one change and really had done a rock worthy credit on the run to try to pick him up. Harris for two. Taken over by Muscala. Muscala has his first rebound of the game. Now finds Stewart, going for three. Another miss by three-pointer. And Bama will come in on the other hand. Bama seemed really he was confident. Let's see if he can do this. Oh, and let's see. 
Oh, went short. That's it for the Bamba. And the team of Funders are losing their strength, not able to take their own time. So that will end the game. Final score, Orlando with the winning two streaks of the season, 58 at OKC Funders, 37. It's now time to get some report side for the player of the game. David, what do you have here? Thanks very much, Wendell. A big performance on the boards tonight. Did you expect to dominate like that coming into the game? Thank you, David. With the team of this game, we hope you enjoyed this one, and we'll see you all for the next game of Cavs and Sixers. This is me, Phone, along with Paintbrush, thanking you for watching this game. It's time now to go back to Santa Beast for the post game show. All yours. Good night in OKC. Mifon, thanks so much here, as with the tough loss here for the OKC Funders, as they picked up a lot of humorous scores in between. This points was turning out big for the Magic to blend things in. It wasn't a blowout game, it was just a, a tough loss and a t great win for the Magic on the other hand. Here are the comparisons in between, as only 25 and 49, 51 percentage for the field goal, for the another attempt to stop for the Magic over 35. 33% for the three pointers turned out just two, but nobody on the other hand had made a three pointers. Only 12 got 12 shots were made and missed. They were trying to like to keep the eyes in the stride to go for the three pointers. Just a perfect free throw percentage for the Magic out of six out of six here. Now, with 83, only one was missed. Fast break points was 6. Points in the paint was 38. Just the second chance points here, too, and bench points, along with the assists. And a great offensive and defense rebounds, 8 and 25. Steel was just 3 for OKC. And 4 blocks, on the other hand, back the other way. Just 3 turnovers. It was close call but nothing had killed the momentum to try to keep the points off the board. And team fouls was only the less one that they have, was three. Great two slam dunks here for the OKC Funders, and the biggest lead was 25. And that was their time of possession of 13.50. Now it's time to close things off here for the New Balance player of the game to start with, and three star players of the game. Here's your look here right at this instant. Starting off, with the magic of the hand. This one has to be believed that the Suggs really did have turned out. Great assist here, great performance run, and just only two rebounds. That was it. Two bucket scores making it ahead. But it won't be enough to make the top three in the game. Here are the top threes on the other hand that did make their way right from here. First up, we have is Shea Gorgix Alexander. Only 8 points, 3 assists, and just a turnover that turned out to be a mistake with the ball tipped off his hand. Well, not quite really enough, but he just might need to go back with him again to prove his ability. Yeah, that's what we do. Number 2 we have is, is Gary Harris, making it look a little difficulty, but didn't really have it all. But we have something here with two assists and two rebounds and a block. That one goes to Wagner. That really turns out eight points in this game. Great block defenseman just take away and rip it out. And only two rebounds and two assists. Really had showing off his most of the time ability that he really wanted to take it all. And with number one player that turned out for the Magic was Wendell Carter Jr. 16 points, 12 rebounds, and the assist. A, a terrific feed off here for the three-pointer, a field goal range, and definitely, of course, a performance run, number 18. So that is it for the fifth game of the new year here that we made it to 2023. I hope you all enjoyed your part of the game, and we will see you all for the next game. Sixers and Cavaliers. This could be a fun matchup here at Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse in Cleveland, Ohio. 
So with that one, thank you for watching. I will be back here along with Test Tube to, for the next game to kick it off as well. And don't forget the NHL game is out so you can definitely check out the previous part of a video that I have just sent out to you guys. The links are in the description here below if you'd like to go check out the Creators Inc. and also the NBA stores. So with that one, thank you for watching. Until next time, peace out everyone for as a while as the NBA 2K23 dial. Says the Son of Beasts, thanks for watching. Until next time. If you don't, if you don't, somebody will.